I'm Gaynor from Fitfish and in this film we're looking at core strength. So core is often a word that's knocked around in the fitness industry but what does it actually mean? Well our core is made up of lots of different muscles in our front, in our back and in our sides and essentially it's any part of our body that isn't our head, our arms and our legs. So why is it important to have core strength? Well, the core is useful for so many things. It helps with our posture and it helps with our stability, which means that we're less likely to trip or to fall. You might have found that sometimes you accidentally trip, say, over your trouser leg and you're able to pull yourself back because your core has a certain amount of strength. And unfortunately, as we get older, our core can get a bit weaker. And that's why older people are more susceptible to, to falls and therefore to breakages. So it helps our posture, our stability. It also protects us from force. So if there's a force exerted, say, on your arm or your leg, the core will help to absorb that so that you, you don't do yourself damage. And it helps to expel things out of your body as well that aren't meant to be there. Um, so really important for all those things. And also in sport and in daily movement, it just makes us more efficient and effective. If we're holding the right position, then our arms and our legs are free to do what they do best. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, it's a feeling as if you're slightly tense in your stomach. So maybe imagine that you're pulling on a tight pair of trousers or that someone's about to punch you in the stomach or tickle you. That's the kind of feeling you're looking for, that kind of slightly embraced. And we can work our core by taking that position, anything we're doing. So if we're lifting weights or if we're walking, if we're running, if we're cycling, if you're engaging your core, even if you just stood still in a queue, then you're still working it. So when we do our exercises, then we're looking for that posture and engaging our core. So there's lots of different things that you can do. You can, you can buy some weights, you can do sit-ups, you can do things like the plank. Um, there's also some BOSO boards and balance boards that you can use. But one of the easiest ways to work your core and the most fun ways is to use a ball, a Swiss ball. And you can buy these for kind of eight to 10 pounds um, in some shops online and some of the sports shops. So, uh, and they're easy to blow up and they are easy to deflate if you need to put them away. But if you leave them out, they actually make a really good chair that you can practice sitting on and engage in your core. So we're just gonna start by warming up. Like with anything, it's important to do a warm up and you can sit on your ball, have your feet nice and wide apart. And you're just gonna twizzle around, going from one side to the other, just warming up that mid area there. Okay, so backwards and forwards, side to side, that's it. And you can practice feeling that you're engaging your core even when you're doing something like that. So when that you feel like you're warmed up, and then you can practice maybe lifting one foot off the ground, and going from side to side, and feeling your extreme points where you, you know if you went any further you might fall over. So that's just a fun way to get that core engaging. Okay, and then if you're brave, you could take two feet off the ground. That's it. So when you've got used to doing things like that, you might want to set yourself a little bit of a challenge, something that you don't need to put your exercise kit on even. You can do it while you're watching TV. You can do it just in an odd five minutes here and there. And that's to just practice kneeling on the ball. And this is a great way of measuring your progress. So you start with your hands on the ball, knees on the ball, and your feet on the ground and find a position and then you take your feet off the ground that's it and when you're ready you can lift your hands off the ball too okay so that's something to practice and that should have all got you nice and warmed up then we're going to look at some different things that we can do with the ball itself so first of all we're going to kneel on the ground and we're going to put our forearms on the ball and we're just going to walk it out slowly Walk it out, and if you can, just drop your pelvis down, then bring it back up again. So you're just going to go as far as you can, and as far as you feel comfortable, feeling your stomach muscles engage, and pull you back up again. So for all of these exercises that I'm demonstrating, it would be great if you could build up to doing them 12 to 15 times, a few times a week. Okay, so you walk out, and in again. Okay, and when you're used to that, you can roll straight out and hold. So you're looking for that nice straight position and in again. 
Okay, so when you've got used to walking the ball out with your forearms, you can take the next step, which is to place the ball by your feet and walk out and walk back in again. And just go as far as you feel comfortable. You'll know when that is. So you go a short distance or a longer distance. Okay, great. And using a ball is also a brilliant way to work on your press-ups. So you can keep the ball close to your hips, which will make a press-up easy. Or you can take it further out. which makes that press-up harder. And you might think that press-ups are just about your upper body, but you try that on a Swiss ball and you'll notice that your core is really having to engage. Okay, so when you've done some work on your front, you could also try doing a static plank. So just come out as far as comfortable and hold. Nice straight line with your body. Okay. Then when we work the front, we always need to work our back as well. The easiest way to do this is with a back raise or a dorsal raise. So we keep the ball close to our hips, come down. And this is the easy option. Harder. And even harder. And you'll feel that in the lower back, possibly a little bit uncomfortable, but that's just because you're not used to working those muscles, so it will soon improve. And another exercise you've probably heard of is a sit-up. And you can use the ball to make these a little bit easier and adjust for your level. So nice stable position, put your arms across your chest. That's it. And to make it harder, you can Go across from side to side. Now throughout all these exercises, it's important to keep breathing. Okay, so next we're gonna have a seat. Gonna sit down on the floor. Gonna put your feet on the ball. Okay, and you're gonna lie back. And you're gonna lift up your bottom off the floor so that you've got a straight line between your shoulder, your pelvis, and your feet. And then you can dip. Okay, so you're building up to do 12 to 15 of these a few times a week. And then we can do a hamstring curl. So we bring our feet towards our bottom. First of all, just practicing on the floor. And then when you're ready, Okay, so that's a great way of working your body all over using the Swiss ball, but particularly working on this area here. Don't forget to stretch afterwards. The ball's great for stretching. And before you know it, your core will be really, really strong. Okay, um, for those of you that uh, would like something a little bit different, um, this is actually um, what is called suspension straps. Um, and it's actually a gym. You can do lots and lots of exercises with it. It's very easy to set up. Um, you can use it on tied to a tree. It, has, it comes with its own door uh, handle, um, or you can put it onto um, a beam, which I'm about to just demonstrate to you. So basically, what you do is just take it out of the bag, wrap the little strap around the beam. So basically, um, what you do is just Strap it up to there like that, and it's like a gym in a bag. <coughs> One big gym in a bag. You can do a 30 minute to an hour's workout with the whole thing. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you some very basic exercises which you can do with it, which is like, the first one is um, bi a bicep pull-up, like this. <coughs> you can do what we call a superman. So hold in there, and then just coordinating your hips your shoulders together, bring that forward there. 
and you can do a tricep push like this. You can do a press up on it, like this, touching the hands together, like this, or you can do what I call an albatross, where you come wide like this. Or you can turn that around the other way and you can use what we call our traps, which come from that position there, wide like this. Then the other alternative is to actually put your feet into it, we can do lots of other exercises where well, you really do need to engage your core a little bit more. <coughs> so you'll be able to do a jackknife from here. Then you can do an adductor like this. You can do both together like this. And you can do a, a pike lifting up like this. Then if you get a little bit more advanced, tuck your knees in like this. You can also do a press up with a jackknife and an adductor and a press. And there you have a gym in a bag. <laughs>